anything odd that you notice knowing what we're actually modeling, which is a spring oscillating back and forth. <laughs> yes. Why does it increase? Why does it increase? Exactly. This is not realistic. This is saying if I let a spring go, it's actually getting wider and wider swings. We are generating energy for free here. Seems a little fishy. Any guesses as to why this might be happening? We saw something similar last week. Air. Yeah, the error. The fact that we don't agree with reality, that means there's an error. We know there's error in Euler's method because it's following a straight line for every interval when really things should be curved. So this is a product. This is error. This is a result of things not being exact. How could I reduce the error really easily right this second? If I went back to my script, how could we very easily at least reduce the error from what it is right now? n. Increase the number of intervals. Exactly. Use smaller intervals. Use more intervals. Exactly. So we're going to boost n here, let's say at 1,000. And before I do it, I'm just going to look at how bad this was. We started at 4, and we ended up having oscillations that were like 10 or 12 high. So very clearly wrong. So we'll save this and run it. And we'll put a close all at the top so we can see our graphs next time. There we go. Oh, OK. That looks more sane. So the issue was error, and we know the error gets reduced when we use more intervals, smaller intervals. Those are dots, remember? That's not actually a connected line. So we have a lot, a lot, a lot of dots, a lot and lot and a lot of dots here. It's still not perfect. We can see here that we're actually going up to about 4.6, 4.46. So we are expanding. We're just expanding less quickly or badly. So it's a closer approximation. Of course, there's a better way to fix this problem to reduce the error specifically. We're not going to fix it completely, but at least make it smaller. That's not using more intervals. It's working smarter, not harder. What could we use instead of Euler's method that's more accurate? <laughs> Joins the Hoynes method, exactly. So guess what we're going to do next? We're going to convert our ODE Euler system to an ODE Hoynes system, which has, by what we saw last class, a lot lower error and better error when we do more work. So we'll go up here, change that, and change that. OK. The only difference between these two things is we have this weird intermediate value, which is exactly what you would have calculated with Euler's method. So we basically take Euler's method and make an intermediate value. My, old, my new w is my old w plus a half an average of the slope we would have gotten before, that's that, plus the slope we would have gotten with Euler's method at the end of Euler's method, which is ti plus 1 and w tilde, so that intermediate w value, half of those guys times delta t. So I don't memorize the syntax, <laughs> in case you're wondering. This is just an idea. I've got, before I had a slope. F is a slope. F calculates a slope. Here I've got one slope and another slope divided by two. That's an average slope. So I'm taking the average of two slopes, because I think the average is going to be closer to reality, times delta t. Uh, oh, yes, that's why it's yelling at me. Yes, we definitely need a times. The brackets were highlighted in red, which was an indication of a syntax error. Thank you. So 1 half times that sum of the two things gives us an average. And all we should have to do now is go back to our main script and change what we use instead of Euler, we'll change it to Hoynes. Whoops, that'll spell it right. And we'll run that. And uh, same error as before. Matrix dimensions must agree. I was almost careful enough. We click on the line, it'll take us right to the uh, error message. There we go. We took a transpose of the first one. We need to take the transpose of the second slope as well because it's also a row vector. It needs to be a column. And then we're good to go. Lovely. And now, this is so much more accurate for that same amount of effort. The oscillations are almost identically for no matter what. So we're not getting that expansion that Euler's method gave us, that energy creation for nothing. This is a much more accurate simulator. It's a much more accurate mathematical process than Euler's method was. That's the conversion. So again, getting into the bookkeeping here, it's part of the lifetime MATLAB skills. It's not so interesting in the differential equation context, I don't think. But just being able to negotiate those kinds of errors 
around ah, transposes, what am I filling in? If you have that approach, it'll make everything you do later on in MATLAB easier because you're thinking like the computer is thinking or at least recognizing when there's a problem, what it might be complaining about and how to figure out what it thinks is going wrong. So in case here, matrix dimensions must agree. Print out what you're trying to add and say, why does it think things are not the same size? I thought they were. Get printouts, see that one thing's a row, one thing's a column, and oh, those, you're right, I can't add those. Let me fix that. That's the kind of debugging strategy uh, to keep in mind as you go through the rest of the course here.